Good evening, everyone. Thank you all very much for coming here and joining us this evening. Um, this is the second of our public workshop series. It's good to know. The first one was about a month ago, September the 28th. We were here in this room and we were talking about how to access information. Tonight, on the occasion of the launch of the Corruption Perceptions Index by Transparency International globally from Berlin earlier on this morning at 10 o'clock, we're going to be looking and asking the question, how is corruption measured? So our three panelists are going to offer some opening contributions and then we'll open it out to the floor for some questions and answers. Just two small housekeeping points, if you could. If you're needing bathroom facilities, they're down the corridor directly behind us. So just head out the back door there and down the corridor. On the left, you'll find both ladies and gents. And also we have, as you'll notice, uh, John down at the back there taking some video footage of our event. So what we're hoping to do is to be able to capture that and to post it up online from our website through YouTube. Um, we're delighted that we're able to do this, but we're also very happy that if anybody's a little bit uncomfortable with uh, the video footage being shown, that uh, we're, we're very willing to listen to that and accommodate that. So please do come up and let us know if you're uncomfortable or unhappy about that. Um, we will uh, begin very quickly and very uh, succinctly by uh, going through each of our contributors in turn. So I'll be in introducing John, then Gillian, and then Gary. Uh, and then straight after that, we'll go into uh, our questions and answers session. Now, it's not something that I'm usually very fond of, but each of our contributors, due, I suppose, to the content of what we're going to be talking about, will have PowerPoint presentations. So some of our attention will be focused over here. Um, <clears throat> but uh, quickly enough, then, we'll, we'll get on through those uh, and get into the real meat of our, our time here this evening, which are, is our discussion. Um, John Devitt is the CEO of Transparency International Ireland and has been so for the past six years since setting it up in 2004. And uh, prior to that, he had a training and a background uh, and work experience in public relations. But I suppose now, as maybe some people might call him a social entrepreneur or a campaigner, his work is pretty much dedicated, focused full time with Transparency International Ireland. So John is going to give us an introduction to today's report from Berlin, what's in it, what it means for Ireland, and maybe what's not in it, uh, and how we can understand some of the data that has come through from the publication today. John, if I could hand over to you. Uh, thanks, Dave. Uh, thanks, everyone, for coming along. Delighted to see so many people here tonight. Um, I'll, I'll start by uh, explaining what Transparency International is. Um, Transparency um, is, you could say, to corruption what Amnesty International is to the abuse of human rights. We're an international network of around 100 different organizations, independent organizations, but accountable to a, an annual meeting of uh, members, members of Transparency International worldwide and supported by an international secretariat in Berlin, uh, which produces this index on an annual basis. Um, we are planning to, to launch a helpline for whistleblowers, uh, people accessing information, witnesses, victims of uh, white collar crime and corruption. Uh, in, in December, uh, we'll, we'll launch this helpline and we'll be offering support to people who find themselves in, uh, confronted with ethic ethical dilemmas or have found themselves uh, the victim of whistleblower reprisal or, or fraud or, or corruption. Um, we spent some time as well diagnosing corruption risks and that's been uh, the bread and butter of TI over the past few years. Uh, TI, I suppose, is, is, is synonymous with the Corruption Perceptions Index. Um, but we do a lot more than just measure perceptions of corruption. Uh, we have undertaken a, a comprehensive review of safeguards against corruption called a National Integrity System Study. This study will be digitized uh, next year in the form of a wiki and will form the basis of a, a citizen collaborative effort to update uh, our knowledge base about how the country is run where the risks of corruption lie. <coughs> we're also campaigning, we're a campaigning organization. So we've, we've pressed hard for the protection of whistleblowers, for example, for greater openness in, in public life and in government in particular. We've also campaigned for uh, measures to, to tackle conflict of interest, both in the public and private sector. Uh, so how, 
how do we define uh, corruption? We define corruption as the abuse of entrusted power for private gain. It's a very broad definition. It covers both legal and illegal forms of corruption. I can go into, we can discuss that later on. Uh, it doesn't necessarily follow that one has to break a law for one to be corrupt or for, for, the, for there to be corruption. The Corruption Perceptions Index is a poll of polls which measures business perceptions to the abuse of public office for private gain. The definition used for the Corruption Perceptions Index is not identical to the one that TI itself uses more generally. And this is partly because of the data available in compiling an index of this type. We use up to 13 different surveys from independent agencies, think tanks, people like uh, the Economist Intelligence Unit, uh, the World Economic Forum, to, to come up with a ranking and consistent scoring for, for individual countries according to how uh, experts and business opinion perceive, uh, how corrupt they, they perceive them to be. Uh, it's not a, an absolute measure of corruption, so your position on the index does not denote either necessarily a high or low level of corruption. Uh, what it does say is that international business opinion believes or perceives your country to be more corrupt than the country next to you in that index. It's not measuring legal corruption either, and I, I should explain what legal corruption is briefly. Legal corruption is lawful corruption. It's the kind of corruption that has not been outlawed. In Ireland, for example, we have not outlawed the, the sale of influence. You can pick up the phone to a lobbyist, promise them 5,000, 10,000 euros to influence, pick up the phone to a minister uh, or a public official to, to in turn influence a political decision, a tax break, a, a planning decision. So we, we, we need to be very clear that the, the kind of, or the type of corruption that this measures only forms a small, relatively small part of the picture, particularly in Ireland. So how do we compile the index? Uh, as I said, we use up to 13 different surveys over two years. The six surveys that were used for, for Ireland's score were compiled or were, were gathered, the information was gathered over two, between 2009 and 2010. Ten, and we standard standardised the data. Some of the scores used by, or the scoring scales used by by the think tanks, vary from zero to five or zero to one hundred. And we have to be able to uh, standardise this data, to, to use some statistical terminology, come up with a standard deviation, to come up with a reliable indicator as to the relative levels of corruption, <coughs> as measured across these thirteen different surveys. So it's about getting as clear a picture using as many of these corruption surveys as we can. And it allows us to, to come up with a, a score or, or um, ranking uh, within a 90% confidence range. Why does this matter? Well, according to Control Risks Group, uh, a consultancy which conducted a survey of international business leaders in 2006, 35% uh, of business people said they would be deterred from investing in a country because of that country's reputation for corruption. So a country with a, a low ranking in the Corruption Perceptions Index or any other corruption survey uh, will suffer uh, reputationally because of, of their place in that, that index. It'll also make it harder, and I'll skip one bullet point, it'll make it harder for, those, for, for, for companies in those countries to trade overseas, given the fact that very often small, medium-sized enterprises are trading on the reputation of the country from which they come, or the countries in which they are based. They don't have a big brand name. If you're trading or you, you are set to join a company in a joint venture, for example, or partnership, you're, you're less likely to, to engage with them or you're, uh, you, you, to begin with, to be far more wary about uh, working with them if they come from a country or based in a country with weak rule of law or a, a poor record in, in tackling corruption or enforcing contracts. Um, 
according to PricewaterhouseCoopers as well, 45% of businesses have turned away from an otherwise attractive investment or business opportunity because of the, the risk of corruption. To a large degree, this, this index is, is, is measuring the risk of corruption and the perceptions of risk of corruption as much as it is uh, the incidence of corruption, partly because uh, business people and investors, experts, have as little access to, to real information as the rest of us do. Corruption is largely a, 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 a conspir conspiratorial crime or phenomenon. It's very difficult to tell with any great deal of reliability how how uh, badly affected a, a country is in reality and much of the information we, we, we gather is anecdotal.